Hi there, and welcome to Graham's Guide, Friday Live, this Friday, the 28th of July. Uh, great to have you here, and um, today we're going to be looking at types of sources. Um, I'm just going to grab a type of source quickly. Um, this is a, a journal. Um, it's the Journal of the Victorian Historical Society. Um, and uh, you can see it's published by the Royal Historical Society of Victoria. And it's got the volume, the number, and the date um, of this particular journal. Um, so we're going to be looking at uh, that in just a moment. But first, let's go in to look at some types of sources. I just want to quickly show you a document that I've put into the um, into the assignment to collaborate assignment to discussion forum. Um, so let's just go straight there. I've got a shortcut to it. Um, I hope you've got shortcuts on your browser. It makes life so much easier. Um, so I'm going to go to Learning Group 12 and I'm going to go into Assignment 2 Q&A. And uh, if you scroll down here, you'll see that I've provided lots and lots of um, guidance here. Um, too much to go through it in one session. Um, you just want to go through these bit by bit, maybe even um, one at a time. Um, you'll see here that I've provided a structure, um, a suggested structure for how you can structure assignment two. Um, but the most critical piece of advice I can give you is to watch this video here, the assignment two video. I recorded this um, a couple of teaching periods ago, but um, the students found it very useful uh, and I'm sure that you will find it useful too. So make sure you watch that assignment two video. You will find it very helpful. But we're talking about types of sources today. And so up here, um, well, let's just go back to the top of the page. Sorry about that. Um, and scroll down until you get to frequently requested sources. And here you can see types of sources. So I'm going to click on this and open up the types of sources document. This is a document I put together um, a few years ago as well. I found, uh, I found this document here. You can see at the top I've got a link to it. Um, and I liked it so much that I recreated it, especially for the students of this unit. And uh, what it does, it lists here on the left um, the most uh, credible and reliable sources for academic writing. And they become less credible and reliable as you go across the page. Now, that's not saying that um, these sources are not credible and reliable. It's just that they're, um, in academic writing, the bar is set very high. And we're going to talk about peer review in a moment, and you'll see how high the bar is set for credible and reliable sources. Um, now, the internet is also listed here. It's on the right-hand side. It's not because it's the most least credible source. It's because it contains everything from the least credible to the most credible. Um, and you can see I've provided some examples. So in each of these categories, um, academic and other nonfiction books, here I've got scholarly and research journals. So this column's talking about books, this top column's talking about academic journals. Uh, then the next col column's talking about um, professional and trade journals. Um, these commentary and opinion journals are um, usually written by experts, but they're more of a commentary. They're not quite as um, uh, strict, strictly written. There's more um, opinion in these journals. Well, as it says, they're commentary and opinion journals <laughs> than you will find in academic books. Um, and then, of course, there's newspapers, magazines, and the internet. So I've provided examples. Um, I've then listed um, their values and uses. I've written the type of language that is used. So in um, magazines, uh, there's generally non-technical language used. But in professional and trade journals, you will find that there's more technical language used and often jargon is used as well. Um, I've also listed the types of authors that you can expect to find that have written the articles in these sources. And then on the second page, um, I've uh, 
provided an idea of who might be publishing these sources. So generally, academic books and academic journals um, might be published by universities themselves or by research institutes that are a part of a university. Um, and then it mentions the kind of graphics that you'll see in these sources and then where you'll find them. You'll find them usually in indexes and that's a whole nother story. I'm not going to go there today. Down the bottom here, I've got a list of academic databases um, that you might like to use for wider research. You don't really need to conduct wider research in this unit, but as you progress through your years of study, um, you will find um, online academic databases very useful as you go forward. So that's um, a list of types of sources that you can find right now in the assignment to Q&A forum. Let's go back to um, this example of a journal right here. So I'm going to go down to um, help and library because I want to show you how you can find um, journal articles in the library. Or I, I want to, what I want to do is, is um, you know, so we, we talk about sources in, um, in, in our classes, and we talk about academic sources. And I think it's probably important for you to know what we mean by an academic source. And what we mean, uh, um, we're talking about academic books and journals. This is a journal. Um, so if we go through here, in this journal, it's made up of many articles, um, many chapters, and there's one here. This chapter here is written by, can we see? Graham Davison, and the article's called On the Street Where I Live, Walking the Windsor Park Estate. Um, so what I want to do is I want to find this online so I can show you what an online version of this article looks like. So that was Graham Davison on the street where we live. So I'm just going to type that in. Graham Davison on the street where we live. Okay, so it's come up as the first um, on the list here. That's no, no surprise there. And it says here that it is peer reviewed. So that's good to know. So what is peer review? So peer review, let me just come out of this for a second. Um, and I'll show you this this book close up, whoops. Um, so this is the book that I was trying to show you before. Um, it's the Victorian Historical Journal. And uh, as I mentioned, it's written by the Histor Royal Historical Society of Victoria. And that article, I just realized it was on the tiny screen. You weren't able to see the title of it at all. So I'm going to show it to you. This is the title. <laughs> I can't believe I was showing you that on my tiny little screen. So that's the title and that's the author of the one that we're looking up. Um, so what is peer review? Peer review is um, it's a it's a type of quality control that's used in academia to make sure that the uh, the information that is shared amongst experts is of the highest quality and credibility. And when uh, before uh, an article can make it into this journal, the author, Graham Davison, will have sent his article to the journal, to the Royal Victorian Historical Society, um, and the publishers there, the editors there, will send his article to other experts who they believe um, will be able to judge the quality of um, Mr. Davison's article. So depending on what those other experts um, report, the article may or may not make it into the final book. Um, on this occasion, the article has made it into the book. So those other experts, those peers, have determined that the quality of Mr. Davis's article is of a high enough quality to um, make it into the book. And not so much, it, it's, it's about it, the quality, but also it's about the significance of the work as well. So if um, someone might write a really high quality art article, but if it's not um, significant, well then it may not make it into a finished book. So that's what peer review is. And, uh, and it's important that you understand that because that's the 
um, level of quality and credibility that we want in your research. So when you're looking for articles to support your writing, we would prefer that they are peer-reviewed articles, either books or journals, um, that have yeah, gone through that peer review process. Of course, um, there are other sources that you can use to support your work. You can use YouTube videos, you can use other digital resources, uh, you can use newspaper articles as well. But these would be secondary sources and you wouldn't be relying on YouTube videos um, as your main evidence to support your writing. You really want to rely on the highest quality sources um, and then use a YouTube video or a newspaper article as a secondary piece of evidence to support what you're saying. All righty. Well, that was a, a lot to talk about. Um, let's go back to this one here. I, let me show you just quickly this what this looks like online. It says here access online. So I'm just going to click on that to access it online. And it says here um, where I can access it. I'm going to go to this one here, the Informit um, link. Waiting for that to open up. Have I agreed? Yes, I'm going to say yes, I have agreed to this because I've been to this site many times before. And here's the journal article right here. Um, and uh, you can view the PDF. Oh, this is the whole there. So let's have a look at that article. It's loading it now. And there it is. It's um, exactly, pretty much exactly the same as what it was in the book. Um, let's have a look. There's the abstract there. It's on page 99. So it's all, it's, it's, it's the same. Um, let me just fade across. So here's the article that we're talking about. There's the abstract. And oh, there's my finger covering the page number. <laughs> and uh, uh, take my word for it, the page number is 99, and here it is on this as well. So you can see that these online journal articles are electronic versions of physical documents. Um, and so that's another thing that's important to take note of when you're um, formatting your reference list, um, make sure that you cite what you have seen. So, um, yeah, so for example, if you, if you have a, 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 you want to cite something, make sure that you have read it. So cite what you have cited, if that makes sense. Um, we can talk more about that in the discussions. All right, let me get out of here now. Where do I want to go? I think I've gone everywhere. What's on our list? Peer review, citing, referencing. Ah, oh, the unit re reference list. Let me take you to the unit reference list before we finish up. Um, how can I get there? We'll go to the modules page. And if we scroll to the very bottom of the modules page, here is the reference list. I've shown you this before. Um, there's the week one references, but now you've done, that was week zero, sorry. Here are the week one, week one references. Here's that important reading that I steered you towards, Future Work Skills 2020. In week two, um, there were um, two important references that I steered you towards. Um, one was the Dr. Chu videos. Excellent viewing. I highly recommend it, this video series, Dr. Chu videos, and also the Livingston article on meta metacognition. So those two um, sources are, are important um, to uh, be on top of. And then in week three, um, these three articles here, I highly recommend the McDonald reading, the Mishra meeting. Now in um, the week three uh, discussion board, you'll see that I'm referring to the Mishra article in everybody's response that I respond to, because I want to draw your attention to um, these peer reviewed um, sources, because these are what we hope that you will use in your um, assignments uh, two and three. You may not use these in assignment two because that's a little bit different. In assignment two, you probably will use Boulder Vino um, because you're going to be talking about uh, language registers and so you'll need to cite someone on language registers. Just quickly before I go, let me go into um, 
back to that uh, step back to where I was um, because I want to show you another reference for week four that I'd like you to read. Okay, let's go into group 12 and then I'll finish this video and you can go on your merry way um, into week four. No, that's not where I want to go, is it? No, I want to go to the, sorry, I want to go to the assignment two forum. Okay, this is where we were before. This is where I showed you that types of sources. But down here, where I talk about the structure for um, assignment two, I've included an additional reading um, for Brown. Uh, and I highly recommend that you read this um, reading by Brown. I've only included, um, I haven't included the whole book. I've just included the page that I think you should have a look at. It's very short. It's just this one page here, um, but it talks about um, language registers and uh, language styles. So I recommend you have a look through that. Where are they? Here they are. Um, these styles here. These are the, very similar to what is being talked about in the Baldovino video, but as I said, Baldovino is not necessarily a peer-reviewed source, whereas Brown is a peer-reviewed source, um, and so it's of higher quality. So I would, you know, you might like to cite Brown in addition to Baldovino in assignment two when you're talking about um, language registers and spoken and unspoken messages. All right, that's enough from me today. Thanks for watching this week's Friday Live. I'll catch up with you in the discussion boards. Bye for now.